Hey guys, it's the plant doctor here. And what I want to talk about today is this grass underneath my feet here. Perhaps, in my opinion, the most beautiful grass that we can grow in our area, which is zoysia grass. We're going to talk some, about some pros. We're going to talk about some cons and I'm going to give you some tips about growing a beautiful zoysia lawn. The first thing I want to talk about are the pros. And one of the pros that we have here with zoysia grass is the fact that it can take more shade than any other grass that I can grow in my area. I'm in a southern climate. I'm zoned right on the line between zone 7B and 8A uh, in Alabama. And so we're, our grasses that we grow here are Bermuda, zoysia, centipede, St. Augustine. Some people try to do fescue, but it just it gets burned up here. It doesn't do a good job. Zoysia can take more shade than any other grass that we can grow here in my area. As you can see here, we're under this maple tree, a red maple. I have snowball viburnums behind me over here. There's a big crepe myrtle off to the side over here. The house is over here as well. This area that I'm standing in gets maybe four hours of direct sunlight a day, which is enough for zoysia. It gets some morning light that comes up from behind the camera. And it's doing a really, really nice job growing in this area. Another thing that's great about zoysia grass is the fact that it grows so thick. If you were to walk on this grass in bare feet, you would think you're walking on carpet. It, it, it is great. I love this grass. It grows so thick. And with that are some advantages uh, in the fact that we get some weed suppression from that. So you don't have to put near as much chemical down on zoysia typically as you would on say like a Bermuda lawn. And part of that is because it grows so thick. We don't have near the crabgrass problems, the Virginia creeper problems, et cetera, that we see with zoysia, or excuse me, with Bermuda grass. So what we see with zoysia grass is it will outcompete other grasses. I've seen this grass uh, where you've got Bermuda and zoysia mixed. If you've been watching the channel here, uh, you know that I've slowly been plugging my, my yard with zoysia grass and it will outcompete the Bermuda. Now it takes some time. Zoysia grass is very thick, it's very dense, but it does not spread near as fast as say like a Bermuda grass. So that aspect would take some time, but it's so dense and so thick, it will actually shade out the Bermuda grass. And so that is one advantage we have with this. Another advantage is actually my wife kind of tipped me off to this. She's a civil engineer and all the time dealing with erosion control stuff. If you can get a stand of zoysia grass on a hillside, it will hold that hillside way better than any other grass that we have to our disposal in my area. So Bermuda, especially uh, things that go dormant, Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, St. Augustine, uh, those go dormant. And in February, March, those grasses can get a little thin because they're not actively growing. They've been dormant since the first frost, which for us is usually in November. And you'll st see some uh, soil start to erode off of some hillsides. This grass is so thick, you don't see that happen. So that those are some really, really good pros about using zoysia grass. Let's go look at some more grass and we'll talk about some cons of this. Let's talk about some of the cons of zoysia grass. The first thing, this perhaps the biggest turnoff for most people is the price of this turf. You're gonna pay perhaps up to three times as much for a pallet of zoysia as you will for Bermuda. So if you're paying say 150 a pallet for Bermuda from a side farm, you're probably paying close to three, if not $400 for a pallet of zoysia. The reason being is this, with Bermuda, it spreads really fast and they can get two, sometimes three cuts off the same square footage or acreage per year. With zoysia, it's a one and done. Once they harvest that zoysia, they're not gonna have any more zoysia on that same plot of land 
until the following year because it just doesn't spread as fast as Bermuda. So if you've got a bare spot in your area and it's Bermuda, it'll fill in pretty quick. It, it throws those runners out and it'll, it'll cover it up. Zoysia, what you may have to end up doing is taking plugs or go getting a few pieces of sod to put in the bare spot. And then over the course of maybe a year, that bare spot will fill in. So that is one disadvantage to your zoysia is the price. And then that second thing being the fact that it will not spread over those bare spots near as fast as other grasses. Another disadvantage to zoysia, in my personal experience, it's not as drought tolerant as Bermuda or, or centipede. Uh, those grasses can take a lot of drought stress, a lot of heat stress. Zoysia will be the first grass to start to go dormant if it gets really stressed in the summertime. If you go through a drought period and your grass is not under irrigation, what you will see is that zoysia grass will want to go dormant and it may be very, very slow to come out the following spring because of that. Also, if you get uh, an insect in infestation in your zoysia, if you get grub worms or spittle bug or something like that, the fact that it does bounce back so slow, if you get one of those infestations in the fall, we go into dormancy, coming back next spring, what you'll see is your zoysia will come back very slow as well compared to some of those other grasses like Bermuda or St. Augustine or centipede grass. So th those are some cons that you need to be aware of in terms of tips. What I do with zoysia lawns is I'll do two pre-emergent applications a year and it's plenty, it's more than enough. Uh, if, if you'll do one in, in, in my area, it's usually, I, I look at Valentine's Day as, as my start date. And if it's cold, I'll hold off till maybe the first part of March if we're starting to have days uh, where we're in the 70s and, and lows are in the 50s. Uh, what I'll do is go ahead and start putting out that pre-emergent a little bit early. So just Valentine's Day is a general rule of thumb in my area for your pre-emergence. I'll put out about two to two and a half pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet on zoysia turf. Uh, and I'll do that at two applications. I'll use a slow release 90 day prill. And I'll put that application out around in February, or excuse me, April, uh, once the grass begins to come out of dormancy. And then midsummer, so sometime around, we'll say the 4th of July. So late June, early July, I'll come back I'll hit it with another round of 90 day slow release and that'll get me somewhere into September with my fertilizers. But at that time I'm looking to slow that grass down anyway to go into dormancy. And then I will do another uh, pre-emergent application somewhere in October, November timeframe. So somewhere around Halloween, I'll do another pre-emergent application and that will take care of the poana grasses and henbent and some of those winter and early spring weeds that sometimes we, we see come up in, in grass. But that's it. It's two pre-emergent applications. It's two fertilizer applications. In terms of watering, ideally, you want about an inch of water per week on average. As you can tell right now, I'm filming and it's starting to rain on me here. Uh, so we've had a lot of rain the past couple days and so I'm not too much worried about getting water on this grass right now. Uh, but if you go a week and it doesn't rain, it's a good idea to put a, uh, turn the hose on. If you've got a hose, water the yard. If you've got automatic irrigation, turn that on and, and water it as well. In terms of mowing height here, I mow this grass. This is uh, my neighbor's grass and I, and I mow their lawn for them. I mow this at three inches. I've seen zoysia mowed on golf courses as low as like an inch, three quarters of an inch. I've seen it uh, on the fringes of greens and it makes a really nice grass for that. But for the residential application, I wouldn't recommend it because you've got to mow it like every single day and you got to water it every day. If you're mowing in, in that two and a half to three and a half inch range, you're gonna mow once, maybe twice a week and that is ample. 
you're also going to save a ton on your water because the grass is so thick you're not having to water it as often either so i would recommend mowing your zoysia grass at about three inches mow it once a week if, if you're getting excessive growth you may have to mow twice a week the general rule of thumb on your zoysia grass is going to be cut off one third of the leaf blade no more than that so if this grass got up to four inches tall which would be really tall for this zoysia grass that the the max i would cut at is three inches i wouldn't go to two and a half i wouldn't go to two but if i mow this once a week on average and i'm taking about a half inch off the top i mowed it at three it gets up to about three and a half and i'm back out here knocking it down to three again and it keeps this yard nice thick and lush so those are some pros those are some cons and those are some tips about growing a beautiful zoysia lawn guys as always thank you for watching the plant doctor and until next time happy gardening